Hello and welcome back to our hands-on science. We are in week 10 and these are the body parts we'll be doing today. And you get this from your tutor and so you can color it and get ready to assemble your body. We've got the lungs today, the liver, the small intestine, and the large intestine. So let's get started with our lungs. Now here's a great picture of our lungs and it shows here's our trachea here where we breathe in through our nose and our mouth, it goes down through our trachea to our lungs. And we'll be learning the parts of the respiratory system as one of the pieces of our memory work this cycle. And you can see here we've, we've got the bronchi that separate into two different lungs. There's an upper lobe and a lower lobe of our lungs, and then the little tree-like bronchioles that are at the, at the um, end of the bronchi bronchi here that go out and get the, all that spread it all the um, uh, air out through our lungs and then bring it back in back to the heart like we talked about when we talked about the heart the lungs are soft and spongy and they're what supplies our body with oxygen and then it disposes of carbon dioxide which we breathe in the oxygen and then we breathe out the carbon dioxide which is a waste product of our body we don't need the carbon dioxide so we get rid of it and when we talked about the heart we talked a little bit about how the blood goes from your heart to your lungs to get that oxygen and goes back to your heart again and then gets pumped out through the rest of your body so all of our blood can have that oxygen to get to the, all the different parts of our body. I wanted to show you this illustration here that incorporates the lungs and shows how this works and just real quickly I'll show you here. Here's an example where it comes, the, the blood comes from the all of the different parts of our body, our periphery, and goes into the lungs here on the right side, into our right atrium, um, brings, bringing that blood back to the heart so that it can pump it to the lungs. So you'll see here it gets pumped to the lungs, both sides, gets filled with that oxygen that is breathed in from our lungs and goes back to the heart on the left side into the left atrium, which is here, this top part here, and then down to the vent left ventricle, which is the part that pumps it then out to the rest of our body and the arteries take it back to the rest of our body. So our blood will be filled with that oxygen here in the, in the, um, lungs and then go back to the heart and send it out to the rest of the body. And so that's how our blood carries the oxygen through our body to the parts of, so that it, all of our cells can have the oxygen it needs to move and grow and thrive. Our next body part is our liver. Now here it is, it's under our lungs here next, on, next to the stomach and the liver is on our right side of our body and it's quite a big organ. And like we talked about when we talked about the pancreas and gallbladder, it kind of hides some of the organs that are underneath and our gallbladder is just right there under the bottom there. Now it's a factory, our liver is a factory that produces bile and the nutrients that we need for our body, but it also is a storehouse where it stores the vitamins and nu the vitamins and sugars and nutrients. It stores them there in our body until we need them, and then it sends it out through our body through our blood. One additional thing our liver does is it cleans our blood, takes out the worn out blood cells, that destroys the toxin and filters those out so that our blood can be nutritious for us and um, gives us the things that we need throughout our body. Next, we're gonna talk about our intestines. And we see here, here's a picture of the stomach that we talked about in another video. And then it pushes that food out here and goes down into our intestines. Now here's that liver that we were just talking about. So see how it's dark brown there? You can color yours dark brown. And there's that gallbladder that we did earlier and a couple weeks ago. All right, so here's our intestines. So we have two different parts of our intestines. We call them the large intestine and the small intestine. Now something interesting is the small intestine is longer than the large intestine. So it makes us wonder, well, why do we call them small and large if the small is actually longer? Well, if you can see here, the 
large intestine is bigger in diameter than the small intestine. So the large intestine is larger around the round part of it. If you're like going through a tunnel, it's like a bigger tunnel than the small intestine, and that's why we call them that. Now the small intestine, like I said, is longer. It is 20 feet long. Do you know how long that is? Now, I'm uh, about a little bit over five feet, about five and a half feet tall. So that would be if you would take almost four of me and lay them down, if I you know, took four <laughs> of me and laid me down across the floor, it'd be, that's about how long it is if you were to spread your small intestine out. Or uh, put another way, most of you guys are about four feet tall, so it'd be about five of you, you and your friends laying from length to length, from foot to head across the floor, that's how long your small intestines would be. Now the large intestine, now remember, it's not large because it's longer, it's large because the diameter of the tunnel is bigger. That is about five feet. Now that's about uh, a little less, if you were to hold it up to me long way, lengthwise, that'd be a little, I'd go about, probably about to my nose here, or taller than most of you. If you were to take your large intestine and hold it out, it'd be a little bit taller than most of you. <laughs> Pretty crazy, huh? That's inside of your body. So the small intestines work to push food slowly through. I'll show you here how food starts up here and goes through your intestines and it starts in, in the small intestine and is pushed slowly through by a muscle, remember we learned about muscle, and continues to be digested. It takes about four to eight, hour, four to eight hours to go through there. And the ti there's tiny hairs in there called villi that help absorb food as it goes through slowly so that it can absorb the nutrients that it needs. So this is a pretty cool picture. This shows um, a picture of what our intestines look like. This is kind of like an x-ray, but with color to show it. Now, I'll, I'll show you one more picture here that shows the time it takes for it to go from our mouths down to our large intestine, because after it goes through the small intestine, then it goes through the large intestine, and this is where the water is taken out of it. So um, it's still kind of watery as it going, is it going through the small intestine, getting those nutrients out, going through so they can go to the rest of the body. Now it takes about 10 to 12 hours to go through our large intestine and to take that water out and those nutrients out and then it creates a solid and then it's finally pushed out through our rectum as a solid, and you might be familiar with what that is. <laughs> it's our waste product, the solid kind. So from the time it takes to get through our mouths to going out our rectum there to go through that whole digestive system takes about 24 hours. So the food you eat today will be utilized, go through our body, go through our whole um, our stomach and, and all of our intestines and then the waste products you'll see in about 24 hours after that amazing system isn't it it's amazing in its size and how it is able to take those nutrients that we need from the food that we eat and then utilize it and get it to the rest of the body what an amazing system. Okay, now to continue on assembling our body, here's what we have so far. Next we're gonna do the liver. Put that liver on. I'm gonna get some glue on the back of mine. Okay, and so the liver is up on the right side and it covers up. It's, you're not gonna be able to see the gallbladder very well anymore because it, if you remember in our pictures, it was up under there, over the stomach too. Okay, and then we're gonna do our intestines. We're gonna start with the small intestine, and it'll show you where it connects to the stomach. And these little tubes here will connect, and so you're gonna put that there. It's gonna go under the stomach. I'm gonna get my glue on it. Get my glue stick here, putting the glue on. 
so we can get it to stay on. Okay. And we'll connect it there in the middle of our abdomen. Okay, and then over the top of that is going to go, you go the large intestine, and if you remember, that's what connects to our rectum, because that's where we need to excrete the waste, and so we wanna make sure that the, this part here is going to be at the midline. Okay, so let's get the glue on there. I'm gonna put that over the top of the small intestine. Oh, mine's a little crooked. All right. Next are the lungs. Now they are gonna go over the top here, like so. And they're actually gonna cover up your heart because they're gonna go on either side of it. I'm gonna get the glue and put that on and this part will be in the midline here. Okay, that's how it looks. You can see the heart underneath it. I just I just um, glued on one side of it so I can kind of lift this side up and see the heart. And this side you can kind of lift up and see the liver if you just kind of put the glue on the middle and the top part of the right lung. Well, I've had such a great time with you learning about our body. That concludes today. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.